Welcome to worship for Sunday, May 19th, 2024, here at First Presbyterian Church of Gardner, Kansas. It is Pentecost Sunday this Sunday, and we celebrate with scripture passages. The first is from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 8, and then skipping down to verses 14 through 21. Hear God's word for you. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem, and at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? And then skipping down a few verses. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, Blood and fire and smoky mist, the sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4 through 14. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. Now, to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one, there is given the through the Spirit a message of wisdom. To another, a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same spirit. To another, gifts of healing by that one spirit. To another, miraculous powers. To another, prophecy. To another, distinguishing between spirits. To another, speaking in different kinds of tongues. And to still another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same spirit. And he distributes them to each one just as he determines just as a body, though one, has many parts, but all its par many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, and we were all given the one spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. And the final reading is... Two verses from Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23, the first part of verse 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Here in these readings of God, God's word about the Spirit of God, may God bless us with understanding today and in the days ahead. Now, Pentecost is an unusual holiday. It is probably the least noticed of all the Christian, main Christian holidays, holy days of the year, Christmas, Easter, Pentecost. Um, maybe because it is not about the life of Jesus as Christmas and Easter are. Uh, rather, it is about the coming of the Holy Spirit. Or maybe... Maybe it's less noticed because it fall, always falls just 
at, before summer begins or just as summer begins. And there are other distractions in our lives this time of year. Pentecost has the, the fewest common rituals in the church, customs in the church. Uh, so Christian churches celebrate Pentecost in a wide, wide variety of ways. And unlike Christmas or Easter, it, it is not a usually a holy day that is linked with family celebrations coming home for Pentecost. Um, those celebrations that do happen around family around this time of year are, are more likely graduations or family reunions or weddings or some other non-church event. Sometimes Pentecost gets lost in all that is happening in our, all the important things happening in our lives this time of year. Uh, we remember the story from Acts, which you just heard, uh, and we think about the coming of the Holy Spirit and what that means, the power and the presence of God with us into the world, into our own lives, into the life of the church, the presence and power of God. We remember uh, the, the wild and crazy wind, the flame of the Spirit resting on each head, uh, the, the miraculous, mysterious presence of God. We remember these things, hard to explain, impossible to hold on to. We sometimes call Pentecost the birthday of the church because, as recorded in Scripture, it is when the, when the disciples first took up the mission of the church without Jesus to tell people about Jesus. They left the upper room. They went out and hit the streets. They announced who they were and proclaimed Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior loudly and for the first time, witnessing to the love of God as shown in Jesus Christ. And later, later in this same chapter that I didn't read, later in this chapter, there's a stirring sermon by Peter and at the, after that sermon, 3,000 people become Christians in that one day. 3,000 people in one day. Today, the idea of that many people learning about Jesus and being touched by the Spirit of God, that many people joining the church on one day, uh, it, it's almost unimaginable, 3,000 people at one time from one sermon. And it, it happens again and again in the book of Acts. Thousands converted at one time. Thousands learning about the risen Jesus Christ. Thousands committing to serve Jesus every day and for the rest of their lives. It's hard to imagine that kind of impact. It's hard to think how this experience in scripture could possibly apply to us today, but it does. That same spirit that poured over the disciples on Pentecost in fire and wind and power and might, that same spirit moves among us in our congregation, in our world. That same spirit fills each and every one of you maybe a little more quietly than on that first Pentecost, maybe in a little more orderly Presbyterian way in our congregation, uh, but you are filled with the Holy Spirit just as authentically, just as deeply. The Spirit of God moves in you. The Spirit of God fills you with God's grace. Today we celebrate that Spirit of God. We celebrate that the Spirit still comes in miraculous ways, still flows through a community of gathered believers. We celebrate that the Spirit still gives gifts to each of us, gifts as, as many and as varied as the people in our congregation and our community. We celebrate that the Spirit still inspires us to use those gifts for the common good, use our gifts, whatever they may be, and that God's Spirit still and continually opens doors of understanding and outreach, of sharing and caring, of, of giving and growing. Today we celebrate the Spirit of God among us. <laughs> 
The reading from Corinthians for today helps to clarify the gifts of the Spirit among us. Uh, it, it was written several years after this story, the events of Acts, the first Pentecost celebrated by the church. It was written to a church, a specific church, trying to figure out how to live our faith and commitment to Jesus, much like we continue to do today. They were arguing about which gift was better, which was more important, uh, which gifts proved that you had received the Spirit of God. Uh, some, some thought that uh, some gifts were obviously better than other gifts. They, perhaps they thought that uh, it was better to be a great speaker than to be a quiet person of faith. Perhaps they thought it was better to, to speak in tongues than to tell a Bible story. The scripture for today says, no, 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 no. Uh, all gifts of the Spirit are good gifts of the Spirit. All gifts are good. The key is to use any gift from God to glorify God and to help others. One gift is not better than another. Every person who receives the Spirit of God receives the same Spirit of God. It, it just shows, us, shows up in, in different ways in different lives. Now, I'm not any more or less filled with the Holy Spirit than you are. And one person is not any more or less blessed by God's Spirit. We all are one in Jesus Christ. We are all equally blessed, equally empowered with, with gifts from God, and equally called to share those gifts to serve God in the world. The call of the, that scripture um, to the Corinthians, those first people hearing that letter, the call was to quit focusing on yourselves and your place in the church, or worse, focusing on the shortcomings of someone else. Quit doing that. Uh, don't try to get your, get your own way, but look for God's way. Rather, let the Spirit of God move, explode really, in, in and through you, and spread out into the world. Let God's Spirit loose in the world. Let God's Spirit excite you and inspire you and, and let the power of God transform. The scripture says you are the body of Christ. You have gifts to share. You have a part to play. You have a job to do. And you have been filled with the one Holy Spirit of God. And collectively, God can work miracles of grace and healing and energy and hope as we work together in God's grace. From the verse, that last verse from Galatians for today, there are nine different gifts of the Spirit identified in there. There probably are other gifts we could identify, but in that passage, Galatians 5, there are nine gifts of the Spirit. The words are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. I invite you to think about those words and choose one of those words and receive that word, that word of God, as inspiration for Pentecost. Maybe you, you, you choose the word love because you're a very loving person. Or maybe you choose um, that word because that is the gift of the Spirit you already possess. Or maybe you receive that word as a challenge uh, because that's the gift of the Spirit that you need to work on. Maybe you choose a word um, because you hear God calling you to something new through that word. Um, or because you, you have an idea of how you might help this congregation to move forward using that gift, or, or how to help the town, or how to help Gardner or the world in any way. 
Maybe that's why you choose that gift. And, and if you prefer, you, can, you don't have to choose one. You may choose more than one. You may choose all of those words. Receive all of those nine words as your gift of God today. Your inspiration from the Spirit of God. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Let God move in you to build up the body of Christ. Let God inspire you to, to help share the good news of God's grace in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, to witness to God's presence and power all around us. On that first day of Pentecost, the, the Spirit of God was visible among them. They could see, they could hear, they could touch. On that first day, Pentecost, the disciples received courage and power, energy and joy, passion and inspiration. So they ran out into the streets and they told everybody. They told everybody about the miracles that were happening among them, the grace that God had given them. That first Pentecost, 3,000 people were touched by God's grace and moved to serve Jesus Christ. There were only 12 disciples, maybe a couple more hangers on, but there were only 12, but 3,000 people were moved by those 12 in one day. How much more do you think God can use us to live the good news of God's love if, if we just get out of the way and let the Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God move pour through us into the world. You have been called. You have been touched. You have been gifted. You have been transformed. You are alive in God's grace. You're gifted by the Holy Spirit. You are the body of Christ in the world. Live in God's love and serve God. Thanks be to God. Amen.